results. I'm very, very glad to have you here and uh, I would like to talk with you about your books like I'm Not a Serial Killer or your latest book Blue Screen. Yes. So, my first question would be, seven years went by between your first books, the John Cleaver trilogy in 2009 and your latest book Blue Screen. What changes have you undergone as an author in this period? <laughs> Lots. Um, I've moved around. I actually spent two years living in Germany, which is where I started writing Blue Screen. The biggest change for me is that now my children are older. I have a 15-year-old daughter. And so when I started the books, she was, you know, what? She was just eight or nine. And, uh, and so I think that that's reflected in Blue Screen. Uh, a lot of Blue Screen is about the relationship between a father and a daughter. Whereas in uh, Serial Killer, it was kind of a little boy and his mother. So it's, it's not me thinking about my parents anymore. It's me thinking about my children. <laughs> okay, wonderful. So Blue Screen was somehow inspired by your own children. Well, in part. I would say that relationship is. And there's other aspects as well. Um, one, an interesting thing happened to me while I was trying to work out the series of Blue Screen. So I heard my daughter in the next room over talking to her friends. And I thought, she doesn't have any friends over right now. What's going on? And I went and peeked in the door, and it wasn't three girls talking. It was one girl talking with two friends on FaceTime. Oh. And I started to think, well, distance is meaningless now. Our technology is so good, you can have friendships and you can have um, conversations with people who aren't even on the same continent with you. And so a lot of that is reflected in blue screen, just the way technology has changed the way we live. Okay, so my second question is, um, what do you personally think about the film uh, I'm Not a Serial Killer, which was released in 2015? Yeah, it, uh, personally, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it. It actually just was released publicly this August, so just a couple of months ago in 2016. Um, it is different than the book. In particular, the ending has been changed. Oh, okay. But I really like the changes that they've made to it. And the actors especially, Max Records, who plays John Cleaver, and uh, Christopher Lloyd, who plays Mr. Crowley, the neighbor, they're wonderful. They're absolutely perfect. Yes, I saw the trailer and the neighbor was really creepy, so I think it fits very well. <laughs> And in the Patriots trilogy, mm -hmm. um, you created a disease and warriors who turned against their creators. In Blue Screen, a drug is um, used to take control of digitally connected people. Both books show men's invention turning against them. What makes this topic of such an interest for you? Well, in one way, I think that's been the core of science fiction since the beginning. I mean, The very first science fiction book was Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, which was about man's inventions turning against him. I think that that's one of the things that we worry about and that I worry about in particular as we get into the future. Um, you know, that we are inventing things so quickly that we're not necessarily paying attention to how they're going to be used and what we're going to be using them for. Um, I love technology. I think it's great. And I think if any of us were given the choice to live at any time of history, we would pick now because we have so many amazing things that we can do. That said, we just need to be careful and make sure that we're making, making our technology do the right things for the right reasons. Okay, so even though you like technology, you also reflect some fears of yourself in this book. Yeah, well... Technology really, at its heart, it's a tool. It's like a hammer or a wrench. And a hammer can't do anything by itself. A hammer is not necessarily good or evil. But you can use it to build a house or you can use it to kill somebody. It all depends on who is using it. So I guess you could say what really scares me are people. <laughs> oh, okay. So people are somehow scary. That's right. <laughs> um... Yes, so let's talk about your latest books, the Mirador series. Um, what inspired your books and did these books turn out what you envisioned them? Yeah, so when I was living in Germany, I uh, obviously was very interested in questions about passports and visas. And so an article appeared and I started reading it and it said that, uh, I believe this was in 2014, 
it said that uh, ath- uh, video game players were now eligible for athletic visas, the same as a football player or a basketball player. And I thought that was really amazing. That was the first little spark of the idea that the digital world and the real world were combining in very new ways. And that's what got me thinking about writing Mirador, was that concept. And that's why the main characters, Marisa and her friends, they are video gamers. And that's kind of what they're trying to do as a job. They're still not quite there yet, but they're working on it. Um, Once I had that idea and started thinking about what kind of world these characters would live in, then all of these other ideas started coming. How are we going to use drones? What is it going to be like when cars all drive themselves? Um, And so that world kind of exploded, and then at the very last, after I had characters and after I had the world, then I finally got the idea for the digital drug that is the story in the first book. And yes, I am very happy with it. It did turn out the way I wanted. It turned out uh, a little more of a horror story at the end than I was intending it to be, Uh, but I guess that's just kind of how I write. (laughs) You talked about self-driving cars. Would you ever place yourself in such a thing? Oh, absolutely. I cannot wait. (laughs) That is what I want. I want to be able to have a car and say, take me to the store. Or maybe I wouldn't even have to get in it. I'll say, car, go pick up the kids from school. Get yourself some gas on the way home. And I want a car to be able to do all of that all by itself. Okay, I would be too afraid to sit in such a thing, (laughs) I think. And... um, While reading the book Blue Screen, I wondered sometimes about the choice of some names like Abendrot or Ginny. Um, For example, Ginny, is this somehow like a combination of genius and a gin like in Aladdin or something completely different? Well, the Ginny in particular um, is just like a gin from from Aladdin, from the legends. I was trying to think, what do we have next after the smartphone? You know, we've watched all our different kinds of technology slowly merge into this one thing that everyone carries in their hand. What's going to be next? And I figured, well, we'll just install it right into our brain and it'll do everything for us. And Genie is the name I came up with because I thought it was cool. (laughs) My wife doesn't like it, though. Okay, so just for coolness. Yeah, pretty much just for coolness. Um, Well, and the idea that it, it grants you wishes. You know, that you have this thing that's always there and you can say, hey, find this for me or show me how to get here, or do this thing, and it's right there and it can do whatever you want. So, um, is there a topic you haven't written about, but on which you would like to base a book or even a series? And if so, what is this topic and why? Well, when I first started writing, I was writing fantasy novels, like epic fantasy, dragons and castles and the whole thing. Um, Then when I was finally good enough to get published, I was writing horror novels by that time, and that's where the John Cleaver books came from. I would love to get back to fantasy and write a fantasy novel, and I've got a couple of different ideas that I'm kicking around in my head. Uh, And so I think next year might be the year that I finally write another fantasy novel. I would really like to read that because I like the style and I love fantasy, so I'm waiting for it. (laughs) in Germany, Excellent. what will take a time. And one last question, if I may. Uh, what advice would you give an aspiring author? The first thing that I love to tell aspiring authors is give yourself permission to write a bad book. Okay. Uh, writing is the only art form I know of where people expect their very first piece of work to be perfect and brilliant and to make them money. No one goes out and paints a painting and their very first painting they expect it to end up in a museum. We know that we need practice before we're good and yet with books we have this idea that because it takes so long to finish it it must be brilliant and I need to be able to sell it immediately or put it online and everyone will read it and love it and it will make me a million dollars and no like I said before I was writing I wrote five fantasy novels before finally writing I am not a serial killer It takes practice, just like any other art form. So just allow yourself, give yourself permission to say, I'm going to write this, it's going to be terrible, and that's okay. Because that first book, its only job is to teach you how to write your second book. And then the second one will teach you how to write your third one. 
and maybe it will take you six books like it took me before you finally write one that's awesome and, and everyone wants to read it. Or maybe it's only three or maybe it's ten. You just need to make sure that you, you, uh, you take that time to practice and don't get discouraged because you will get better. Okay. So I'm very hopeful that one day I could be an author too. <laughs> so I really, really thank you for the possibility to interview you and I hope that you will enjoy the rest of your stay here in Frankfurt. Well, thank you very much and good luck to you in your writing. Thank you very much.